Welcome to Syntax, a Generative Introduction, 4th Edition. My name is Andrew Carney. I'm a professor of linguistics at the University of Arizona. I'm the author of your textbook, and I'll be leading you through this series of video tutorials. In the last video, we talked about theta grids, the theta criterion, and theta roles. They serve the function of in stipulating what kinds of arguments can appear alongside of various kinds of words. So for example, we were able to restrict X-bar theory by saying that certain kinds of elements are required with a given word, and certain uh, kinds of words are not allowed. And we encoded that in the theta grid. The theta grid made reference to things that are meaningful. That is, they're related to the semantics. So they talked about thematic relations, such as agent and theme and experiencer. In this video, we're going to talk about a case of DPs that appear not to have a theta role, which is a little bit concerning when you have the theta criterion, which says, all noun phrases or DPs must have a theta role, and all theta roles must be assigned. So let's have a look at these. These are called expletives. Expletives um, come in two major forms. One major form are what we call uh, the DP that comes along with uh, weather verbs. So uh, verbs like it rained, it snowed, it hailed. Now, they also show up with certain kinds of uh, predicates like is likely. So it is likely that Bob left. The it there is uh, an expletive. Now if you think for a moment about what is the meaning of it, it here in the weather verbs might mean something like the weather, but it just might as well be nothing, right? It, it, it rained is almost the same thing as there was raining. It snowed, it's the same thing as there was snowing. If you speak a romance language like Spanish, you'll know that in fact in those languages you don't put an it in. You just say llueve, for example, or um, to, to indicate that, um, that it rained. You don't actually put in the it. Um, we call these noun phrases like this, these ones that don't seem to have meaning, uh, we call them expletives. Another term for them are pleonastics. Uh, the reason for that is because the word expletive also has another meaning referring to a swear word. Um, but when, we, when linguists talk about expletives, we're not talking about swear words. We're talking about words uh, like the it here. You also see expletives in forms like um, uh, there was there was a, a boy in the room. The there there is also a kind of expletive. Um, now, so notice that there are really two different kinds of it pronoun in English. There's one which is a real pronoun. So it bit me on the leg, right? That it refers to some uh, animate thing that is acting as an agent of bit. That it gets a theta role. But think about it is likely that I'll leave. What is likely that you'll leave, right? There, there's no theta role associated with that it. In fact, the only thing that appears to have a theta role is that I'll leave. That's the only thing that's required by is likely. Nonetheless, we have to have this expletive pronoun. And it's a bit of a mystery because it doesn't appear to have a theta role. Um, so we have these two kinds of uh, predicates that seem to take these expletives. One kind are uh, words like rain, the weather verbs, which appear to take no uh, arguments. And the second class are classes like um, predicates like is likely. And is likely seems to take a predicate, but it isn't the it. You can see this by virtue of the fact that you can actually put a clause in the subject position of is likely. You can say that John will leave is likely and it means the same thing as it is likely that John will leave. So the only required argument is that clause. We're going to make up a little uh, theta role to stick in the theta grid for is likely 
and that's called proposition. Proposition stands effectively for a clause that states um, something. It, it doesn't ask a question or it doesn't negate something. It is uh, a proposition. I am saying this is true. Um, so what we have here is we have a CP uh, for the embedded clause that is a proposition, and that's the element that gets the theta role from is likely. And it gets that theta role whether it's in the subject position, like that John will leave is likely, or whether it's in the complement position, like that uh, it is likely that John will leave. But what's critical is the it in these sentences does not get any theta role. So how can you have an expletive? Uh, why would you have an expletive that gets no theta role if all DPs require theta roles? Well, this, the, to answer this question, we actually have to ask the question, why might expletives exist? One um, plausible explanation for this is a rule you may have learned about in elementary school, um, which is essentially every sentence must have a subject. And that seems to be, at least in English, it's not really true in Spanish or um, languages like Japanese or Chinese, but in a language like English, it really seems to be the case that every sentence has to have a subject. Um, for reasons that need not um, worry you here, the name of this constraint is kind of counterintuitive. It's the extended projection principle. And it has to do with the history of the field, why it has this name. The linguist David Pizetsky has suggested that we should reframe this as the extra peripheral position, meaning the subject position is extra peripheral. Um, in any case, we abbreviate this constraint, the constraint that every sentence must have a subject, as the EPP. So whenever you see EPP, you just have to think every sentence must have a subject. So let's look at a verb like rain. Rain doesn't really have any arguments. It just happens, right? And, that, and you can see that's true when you look at languages like um, uh, Spanish, where you don't have to have a DP subject position. So the sentence rain seems to meet the theta criteria. It, it's a verb that has no uh, theta roles to assign. But nonetheless, it's ungrammatical in English. Why? It's ungrammatical because of this constraint or filter called the EPP. Um, now, how do we solve this problem in English? In English, we have a special rule, which is the rule of expletive insertion. And effectively, this is uh, insert an it into the subject position of a clause. So when you met with a sentence like rain, which has no subject and would violate the EPP, you insert the it. So that explains why we have expletives. We have them for the EPP. But this, in turn, creates a contradiction within our theory. Um, we have the, on one side, we have the theta criterion that says all DPs or NPs must have a theta role. But on the other hand, we have the EPP that says uh, all sentences must have a subject. And when you have a verb with no theta roles to assign, you ha cannot have uh, a subject, right, by the, by the theta criterion. So we have to ask the question, why doesn't the expletive insertion cause a violation of the theta criterion? The answer here is actually quite clever. It has to do with the ordering of operations. And when you check um, certain constraints relative to those, um, to those operations. So let us revise the model that we gave uh, in a previous video. And we're going to add some extra steps. So remember, we propose that um, what happens is that your grammatical system has two parts. It has a lexicon, which has a whole bunch of information in it uh, about words, uh, all the idiosyncratic properties, including the theta grids. And then you have a computational system, which combines uh, those words together into a sentence um, and then checks them against various constraints. So imagine that the model looks like this, slightly more complicated what goes on in the computational box. We have X bar rules, they build trees. And what you do is you build those trees um, and you check it against the theta criteria. Um, 
Now, let's say you have a verb like rain. Um, you're not going to have a subject there yet. You just have the verb rain or is likely. There's nothing in the subject position. Um, so it meets the theta criterion because there are no DPs to get a theta role. Then, sort of knowing what's coming ahead, you have a rule of expletive assertion. An expletive insertion says stick an it in the subject position. Then you check the binding conditions and the EPP. Now, once you've inserted that it, you're meeting the EPP. So the reason that expletives don't cause a problem for us is they're inserted into the tree after the theta criterion, but before the EPP. If you order things this way, you get the judgments that we predict to happen in a language like English.